here. Uh, this is a 30 year old male active high school band director jumped off some bleachers um, and has this injury. I don't have an axial view, I don't believe, but not a ton of deformity on the axial view, but here's his AP and lateral views. Uh, Jan, can you see these okay? Yeah, and you know, there was a question because you know, you oh, this yeah. is like a right. I'd say Essex Lepresti um, variant, right? So that'd be like a tongue type variant. Yep, and, yep, yep. Um, on the left there, and, and someone asked, like, "Hey, does it does it change your sequence of fixation?" And kind of for this, I would say, you know, that's that's what I'm I'm looking at. I mean, I, I don't think this is an emergency, like middle of the night type of case. Uh, but, uh, you know, I do try to fix calcaneus fractures acutely, so I do admit them and, and fix them right away. Uh, but, uh, you know, someone mentioned the fixation strategy, and I would say I, 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 I put a chance pin in that piece that's attached to the posterior facet and the posterior tuberosity, and I disimpact it, and then I do everything the same I would for any other fracture. Um, but that is the one thing that I do first. I disimpact it. I kind of decompress that uh, the area that's being pushed on posteriorly on that on this skin there. So you'll you'll lift it and push it forward. Yeah, just to decompress that area because I find that then then it's the same sequence. I get the heel out of varus and you know then fix down the joint. I, I do I try to do it similar to how I would do a regular calcaneus. Okay, okay. So you're getting screws coming from lateral to medial pretty early on then. Yes, I mean like I might fix it with a K watt, you know, hold it somewhere, you know, just to get out of my way. But yes. Okay. Um, I, I, I fix it pretty quickly with just with screws. Okay. So here's his uh, views here. Yeah, his coronal here in the middle. So coronal, or I'm sorry, sagittal coming from the side. You can see that piece is attached to that tuberosity uh, fragment there. It's kind of depressed. It's, it's getting a little bit, it's a little dicey there. Uh, here is his axial view. And you got the lateral wall there. Not a ton of ax of deformity in terms of varus and valgus, which is fairly common with these. You can see the CC joint there. What do you think about the CC joint, Jan? Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't go crazy about it one way or the other. I mean, I try to fix it if I can, um, you know, make sure it's not, you know, sometimes it can fool you and be, you know, there could be some subluxation of the joint there, but I, I'm not a huge, uh, I, you know, some people really get it, you know, uh, you know, direct reduction and so forth. I, I have not been very happy uh, with the fixation distally there. Yeah, unless it's, it's hard. like a big one, big fragment. Yeah. Um, all right. So then, you know, the, just a reminder: the mechanism is still axial loading, right? So you can see here that the you know the talus drives into that facet and then it kicks that piece back. Um, and you know, this is what I was talking about here. If you look at the heel, you can see that there is some potential for for pressure that can happen on the skin um, in the posterior aspect of that tuberosity. So you want to be, you want to be careful with that. Um, the, so sinus tarsi for these, Jan? Yeah, I get, yes, it's sinus tarsi for this. Yeah. And then yeah. like, but I make some perk incision maybe in the back to get control of that, uh, that tuberosity piece. Okay. So sinus tarsi, uh, just for those who may not be familiar with that term, it's basically from the tip of the fibula and that incision will go uh, start at the tip of the fibula and runs down towards the base of the fourth metatarsal. Here they've highlighted the perineals posteriorly and you're kind of coming through. So you can get a direct look at that articular facet. You come through and you got perineals underneath. You're starting to see a glimmer, glimmer of them right here. And then they're having them retracted out of the way. Sometimes you need to dissect down that lateral wall a little bit to get that to get that mobile. But you can see in the base of this wound here, you can see that you're starting to see the articular facet right here. So that's the area they're going to be focusing on um, uh, exposing so that they can lift that piece up. And then as Jan alluded to, um, here's a go perineal, uh, sorry, the lateral wall, perineal tendons. As Leon alluded to, that oftentimes will place a, a K wire uh, through a posterior incision here. And one of the, this is a paper that actually out of our institution talking about the pathoanatomy of these tongue types. Um, and again, like you said, you can use a periosteal elevator through that sinus incision plus a um, joystick into that posterior piece. Um, and that can help dorsiflex the joint to help pull it out. But the maneuver actually is plantar flexion, but there's also a little rotational 
uh, maneuver that has to happen as well. Sometimes these can be in a little bit of valgus, not the full tuberosity on the plantar surface, but the more the superior art piece is in a little bit of valgus and a little bit of adduction. So you want to kind of pull it out of that, rotate it out of that um, option. And then talk about fixation options. But ideally, if you're going to put something from the back to the front, you're actually lagging that a little bit so you can suck that piece in. Um, Jan mentioned the sequence and he was talking about, you know, he'll he'll go ahead and put screws from lateral to medial, but I have also seen coming from posterior to anterior as well. So the maneuver here is to elevate it. And, you know, I wish I could say it's as easy as the, as the, as this animation shows, but you kind of want to lift up and reduce that articular piece. And you have visualization through your sinus incision of where that articular reduction is. So here we go. Here's the case. You can see there's a K wire that was placed in that posterior piece, it was lifted up and then it, that was advanced forward. I oftentimes will use a joker or a freer in the, through that sinus incision to kind of help lift that piece up and dial in the reduction. Jan, in this sinus incision, are you using uh, arthroscopy at all? Yeah, I, I've started to use the nanoscope um, a couple of times uh, now. Not, I have not used it too many times, but I, I'm, I've been, uh, I guess, trying to utilize it a little bit more just to see across the joint. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've been using it for more fractures, even like plateaus and everything. I think it kind of gives you a better look. Uh, I think what else can be helpful here is a headlamp for the surgeon yep. Yep. Uh, to look across because it's, it, it, it's, it's like a deep, dark hole uh, to see across the posterior facet sometimes, especially an accommodated fracture. That's right. And it's sometimes hard to get the light in there. There's a bunch of heads in the wound. And, and so it, it does help a lot. Okay, and then screw screw sizes for this. Assuming you, I mean, you're you're a mini frag guy, so you have two four two seven three five four zero. Oh. Is that does that seem like a reasonable mix? Yeah, I have the whole gamut there. And there's another comment uh, that was in the uh, chat box regarding the pins, and I I agree. I I usually will use something stouter, like a two zero yep. K wire or That's larger right. or Shans pin, uh, because you're right; these just bend. There's yeah. a lot of force that you put on these things. And uh, I think whatever, you know, sometimes it you know, depends on the bone quality and the reduction, but yeah. uh, you know, having having all the tools here available for this type of case. Yep, 2-0 two, two, oh, or, or probably larger um, in this case. A 6-2 probably doesn't get you enough enough leverage on this, on this particular case. Um, okay. So here we go. Here we have some, you know, provisional K wires that are placed there, kind of holding that stuff, that uh, those pieces together, and um, hold the reduction. You can see now the critical angle of Gassane has been restored. You have a pretty good view of the articular surface. You can actually see here the undersurface of the talus right here, and you're trying to match that articular surface uh, from that lateral facet. Um, and then on this case, I use screws. And so kind of going back to the sequence of, of screw placement, this one I used, I think this was a 4-0 screw from posterior to anterior, and then using like a 3-5 or 2-7 screw, I can't remember which, from lateral to medial. And then I'll, oftentimes I'll use a screw from kind of the superior to plantar um, to kind of hold that, that piece down as well. Jan, tips for getting a Broden's view. Sometimes I struggle to get this. And what are you yeah, looking for? Yeah, I, I try to... I try to get a bad mortise view. A bad mortise view. That's a good tip. A bad mortise, and then usually you, or, you know, you over rotate it, and I, and then I, I, that's kind of what I almost aim for. But in terms of your fixation there, um, the other thing it, it, to have available, like I think sometimes when you have joint depression, we talked, you know, a little bit before it was mentioned, like a laminar spreader to get the joint up, not yeah. in this type of fracture, um, but uh, to elevate the joint, you know, you use the joker. There's wood handles, there's a, you know, a laminar spreader. Uh, and then I like the idea of these independent screws. And a lot of times, a lot of calcaneuses are fairly long. Um, and so if you put like a posterior to anterior screw along the plantar surface, you're going to need like a 70 to 80 yep. screw sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. So that is not available in all sets. Yep. Uh, so just so, you know, for the folks in the room, like, so if someone's going to be using like three, five screws for that, they're going to, usually you need like a, a different screw caddy, at least at my institution you do uh, once you go above 60. Yep. Um, so it's something to consider. That's an excellent point. And I think you just need to have that. If somebody comes to you and says, hey, I want to fix this with all screws, 
um, and they're thinking three fives, you need to double check and make sure you have enough length because that is, that's a good point that oftentimes that screw is a 70 millimeter screw and, and that's not always readily available. All right, so here we are. These are, I think, six months post-op. He's got a little bit of arthritis in his um, subtalar joint. And, you know, he didn't have pain on the lateral side, but, you know, he still sticks out there a little bit over that anterior process. Is that anything to be concerned about, you think? If they don't have pain, I don't worry about it at all. Yeah. I, I, I Who knows? Maybe down the, the road. Other, it'll, the it'll the one other thing that... Yeah, the other thing I want to ask is, so when you elevate the joint, so I don't think it really, in this case, is a little bit different than your your first case with the amount of joint depression, uh, but are you backfilling with bone graft or, uh, or you know, any type of like a biologic or calcium, calcium phosphate cement? Yeah, let's look at a case where we did it, huh? That's a, that's a great lead-in. Um, 